Good evening and welcome to the PM News Updates on 247 Connect. Now, straight to the details of the headlines for today. Starting off in the news, the founder of the defunct Capital Bank, William Otto Asian, has been sentenced to 15 years imprisonment with hard labor by the Accra High Court for stealing over 90 million Ghana cities of the bank's money. Asian thus becomes the first banking executive to serve a jail term following the massive banking sector cleanup in 2017 that led to the collapse of seven indigenous banks, including Capital Bank. However, in a ruling, the court presided over by Justice Eric Che Bafo held that Otto Asian exploited Capital Bank to his advantage and dissipated the funds of the bank without taking into consideration the depositors of the bank, demonstrating share greed and needed to pay the price for his action. Now, moving into other stories, the High Court in Accra will on December 4, 2023, decide whether or not M1, also known as Aisha Wan, is guilty of illegal mining charges against her. Justice Mrs. Lydia Osema for set the date after both the prosecution and the defense counsel notified the court about exchanging their final legal arguments. She was deported from Ghana in 2018 after the Attorney General decided to discontinue her trial in which she was accused of engaging in small-scale mining without license. However, she was said to have sneaked back into Ghana to allegedly engage in the same activities for which she was deported. Meanwhile, the body of an unidentified woman in her 40s has been found dead at Koforidia Sokori behind Odumankuma Block Factory in the New Jabin North Municipality of the Eastern Region. The lifeless body was seen by residents of the area around 7 p.m. on Wednesday, October 11. Officers of the National Disaster Management Organization in the municipality, who received a district call to that effect, hurriedly rushed to the scene with police from the Fijasa District Command to commence investigations as the cause of death is not readily available. Now let's move into the health segment. The chief executive officer of the Kolebutichin Hospital has disclosed that there are about 700 to 1,000 people on dialysis treatment in the country. Dr. Poku Wariampoma said, out of the number, the dialysis unit of the Kolebutichin Hospital had 350 patients, adding that they run 2,000 sections of dialysis every month. However, Dr. Ampoma disclosed this when a team from the Makers House Chapel International made a 100,000 Ghana cities donation to the dialysis unit units of the hospital. Now let's move into business. The International Monetary Fund's resident representative in Ghana, Dr. Leandro Medina, has clarified that the growth rate for the country has not been revised to 1.2% from the May 2023 forecast of 1.5%. Dr. Medina explained that the latest IMF World Economic Outlook projection of 1.2% growth for 2023 is based on an old set of projections that do not take into account the recent data releases that showed a higher growth rate than expected at the beginning of the program averaging 3.2% for the first two quarters. However, he added that, based on the findings of the first ECF review mission that just ended last week, the IMF staff assessment is that the growth projection for 2023 will be revised up from the 1.5% previously assumed. While still in business, the National Petroleum Authority has sanctioned seven petroleum products marketing companies for illicit distribution of petroleum products. According to NPA, the marketing companies are to pay fines for violating of unified petroleum price and fund regulations, making false UPPF representations to the authority and engaging in third-party supplies. However, failure by the affected companies to pay the fines will lead to a three-month suspension of the operations. And now on the international front, police in the center of Paris to use tear gas and water cannon to break up a pro-Palestinian rally after the French government banned such demonstrations. Interior Minister Gerald Menin said those defying it should be arrested as they are susceptible to disrupting public order. Despite the ban, thousands of protesters gathered in Paris, Lille, Bordeaux and other cities on Thursday. President Emmanuel Macron appealed to people not to foment internal division. The ban on pro-Palestinian rallies comes as European governments fear a rise in anti-Semitism triggered by the Israel-Hamas war. 
Now, Burkina Faso and Russia are scheduled to sign a memorandum of understanding for the construction of a nuclear power plant in the West African nation, according to the state-run AIB news agency. The agreement will be a culmination of talks the Burkina Bay military ruler, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, had with Russian President Vladimir Putin in July during the Russia-Africa summit in Moscow. Having fallen out with most of his traditional Western partners, including former colonial power France, Burkina Faso had turned to Russia for economic and military military support. straight into sports. Ghana coach Chris Hilton says the Black Stars will face a tough challenge against the very experienced Egypt in the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations. He also admitted that he does not have extensive knowledge about Ghana's other group openings, Cape Verde and Mozambique. Ghana has been placed in Group B alongside record holders Egypt for the tournament in Ivory Coast, set to commence on January 13, 2024, with Ghana's first match against Cape Verde in Abidjan. However, Hilton is presently concentrating on the upcoming friendlies against Mexico, scheduled for October 15 at 12.30 a.m. local time, and United States slated for October 18 at 12.30 a.m. local time. Ellen Haaland scored twice as Norway cruised past Cyprus to keep the Azure 2024 qualification hopes alive and forced Scotland to wait to seal their place at next summer's tournament. The Manchester City striker hit two goals in seven second half minutes to take his tally in qualifying to six. Alexander Solos and Frederick Oshnes were also on target in Lanaka. Norway faced Spain in Oslo on Sunday and a failure to win would ensure Scotland's qualification. Scotland could have secured qualification themselves with a point against Spain on Thursday but they were beaten 2-0 in Seville. And finally in the news, Afrobeat star Ayoba Logun, popularly known as Westgate, has been spotted in tears at his mother's wake up ceremony. Recall Westgate's mother, Mrs. Jane Dalopo Balogun, died on August 18, 2023, in London. A candlelight procession in honor of the singer's mom was held on Wednesday with Westgate, making his first public appearance following a nearly month long period of silence as he grieved the loss of his mother. Born in Soro, Lagos, on July 26, 1990, Westgate grew up in a polygamous home with a Muslim father and a Christian mother. His mom, a formidable cornerstone of strength, lends unwavering back into her son's meteoric rise in the industry. Ghana celebrated dancehall musician Stone Boy has sent waves of excitement through his homeland after news broke that his latest album, Faith Dimension, is under consideration for the Grammy Awards. Sharing the great news on Facebook, Stone Boy stated that he was grateful and thankful to tell his story through the album. The Faith Dimension album, which was released on Friday, 28th April, has gained massive attention around the world and it has recorded millions of streams on Spotify and Audio Mark, respectively. The 70 track album features both local and international artists such as British rapper Stormzy, Grammy Award winner and African singer Anjali Kijo, iconic Nigerian Afrobeat singer Davido, South African DJ Maforisa, and Jamaican reggae rapper Shaggy, Dexter Dash, Jamaica, and Mereba US, and Jazz Carries UK. And that's all for today. Good evening.